Welcome to the channel rather dubiously called Rufio. I'm the best Yugi tuber in my street, a very average player who uses this platform to trick you into thinking I'm good at and capable of playing Yu-Gi-Oh on any kind of level at all. Before we get started, why don't you hit subscribe for me, even if it's not because you secretly enjoy bad content, but because you pity me. I need every bit of help I can get. Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Uh, I'm currently recording some of my videos at my workplace, as you very well know. Everywhere is on lockdown, so uh, I'm one of the few people that needs to continue to work. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I work with computers, um, and some of the infrastructure we provide is is kind of important. So, uh, as a result of that, I can't really do my job from home. Although most people are out in the office, so I'm taking full advantage of how quiet it is and using my lunch breaks to record some of these videos. I do want to apologise if there's any crazy noise in the background. Uh, there's likely to be people walking around and going about their business and that kind of thing. Um, doing work related stuff so it is what it is <clears throat> now I wanted to have a discussion today a little bit about light sworn uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a series of these where I go through some of my favorite decks and talk about what position they have uh, in the meta game at the moment and uh, in particular their transition into master rule 5 and how they're likely to get on with that so we'll get stuck into that shortly Okay, so I've got my little book of notes here, so I don't miss anything out that I've uh, thought about that I would like to talk to you about. So the first thing I'd like to talk about is uh, what type of light swarm builds there are out there. Now, there's a very limited amount, uh, and over time this has decreased um, as the deck becomes less and less viable, but it is still one of my favorite decks, and I do still like to mess around with it from format to format. So there's a few different ways you can play the deck. Uh, some people prefer the whole Judgment Dragon Turbo variant, uh, which is still very much viable in terms of uh, we've got Stylish Dragon Safer uh, amongst other options. Um, a lot of people like the rank 4 spam variant. Uh, this is the variant that I quite often play when I want to take it to locals because I want to just go and uh, try and get as many wins as I can, play it as competitively viable as possible. Of course, it is a deck that has now been power crept. The whole mechanic of just milling random cards from the top of the deck um, can leave a little bit to be desired in, in, in respect of if we wanted to play a deck that mills cards that we kind of choose that go to the graveyard, we play something like Burning Abyss. Um, but for those of us who love the cult classic of Light Swarm, uh, we quite enjoy that random variant of just milling three wolf off the top and just filling up our entire field. Um, so again, the rank four variant is, is actually still in a really good place. In fact, it's benefited hugely from the master rule change uh, and it will continue to do so. I think it's, you know, best, best it's a rogue pick uh, for any given format. There will be, of course, anomalies in that in, in terms of people who use the engine uh, in a different deck and benefit from that. But at the moment, I don't see it really going beyond that. Uh, the Judgment Dragon variant is probably a bit closer to more the casual mark rather than even a rogue pick. Um, Judge of Dragon is so much fun to play with, but it is just fun. Um, it's not super, super viable. Although we have got the re-release of things like Levianir, so people may uh, sort of mess around with a, a dragon-oriented variant which could potentially run Judgment Dragon and that kind of thing. Now, in terms of first-turn boards, one of the things that this deck has struggled with, to keep up with, in fact, is building those turn one boards. Um, a lot of the time it's better to play go second variants I find with Light Swan from my experience in that you can just turbo ways to kill your opponent like because we can rank four so so easily you know we can do things like make Utopia double uh, blow out our opponent um, you know we could you know turbo up our links and go into things like Boral Sword or we could go through the Yazzie and Mare, Mare package with the Strudo which there is a combo video how to do although that is now dead on my channel uh, so if you did ever want to go check that out for the sake of looking back and seeing how it would have worked you can find it out there um but yeah we, we have sort of less options even going first now because the likes of global have been hit we've seen uh, malicious hit which some people would run in there um obviously just has now been hit so we we lose a lot of our ways of climbing up and building uh, going first option. So going second is probably a slightly better way to do things. The, the loss of Glow Bulb is huge, in my opinion at least, because I've always run variants that could turbo that out on turn one. Uh, so to have that missing as an option is uh, less than desirable, let's say. However, there are some benefits and things that have come about from the most recent list that we can talk about and, and quite enjoy the possibility of using. And that is things like we've got three copies of Part of Avarice. Uh, three copies of Pot of Avarice is a really, really cool touch because you just turbo and everything out. 
and you can recycle the cards that you want to keep in your deck. That means that if you are running bricks and garnets and things like that, depending on what flavor of the deck you're running, and there's a card that you need to stay in the deck that you're potentially gonna mill out in turn one or something like that, or you can recycle your wolves, so that they're more likely to get milled again. That means that your Minerva can keep pulling out its plays. And on that note of Minerva, we now don't rely upon the links as much. Uh, we do still have Curious as a really, really solid option. Fortunately, that didn't get hit on the list. Uh, but we want to, you know, be able to continue to play that. But it does mean that we can go into th things like Minerva, or we can go into Michael if we want some spot removal. And we're not bound by the link zones in the same respect, which is really, really nice because, of course, turbo and out like, you know, two, three Minerva is insane. Uh, you're going to be Mills Galore, you're going to be drawing plenty, you're going to be popping cards left, right, and center, especially if you run a more pure variant. Uh, and it does give us a whole bunch of options. Um, so, I mean, that's pretty much it. it it's sort of short and sweet. Um, I think that, you know, the, the deck is still what it is, which is. For the most part, you're going to be rogue tier at best. You can, of course, experiment. The, the engine is really fun to play with, just milling and drawing, and turbo through your deck is really nice. And there's definitely decks that can benefit from it. I do think that the Master Wall 5 helps it a little bit. The problem is, is that it also helps most other decks in the same sort of area by the same degree, in that they benefit from not relying on the links and that kind of thing to get the plays going. And so the question is, is, does that put us in a better position than those other decks as well? I'm not entirely sure that it does. Lights One is still going to be one of those decks that I mess around with, and I do think it's going to be even more fun to play under Master Rule 5, given that we're not locked into those zones in the same respect. Um, but will it improve the deck significantly? I'm not so sure. And especially with the, the most recent indirect hits that we've seen on the deck. Uh, it just seems one thing after another. But we'll see. Hopefully, someone will come up with something surprising and then we can play the deck uh, at its best again. Some sort of genius out there. I know it definitely won't be me. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys have found this video somewhat insightful, give you some ideas and just uh, see what you also think. I'd love to hear what you think. Uh, for those of you who play the deck for a bit of fun, or maybe you play it all the time, maybe it is still your deck uh, and you still love Light Sword in the same respect. It's certainly my favorite deck. So anyone comes up with some great ideas, great ways to play the deck, definitely let me know down in the comments. If there's anything that you think that I've overlooked, uh, certainly let me know down in the comments too. Uh, if this is your first time visiting the channel, or maybe you've visited before and you just decided not to subscribe before, maybe you should hit subscribe now. Uh, that would be awesome. Awesome to have you on board for future videos and the like. Uh, if there's anything you guys do also want to see on the channel, please let me know. I'm going to have plenty of discussion content, given that we are currently on lockdown, I think for the most part, uh, not just us, uh, across the board, everyone is in the same position. So thank you very much for checking in, guys. Again, if you haven't already, please hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the garbage content I put together for you, enough to hit subscribe, and maybe even drop a thumbs up and a comment. Before you go, be sure to check out the links in the description to help support the people who are making this channel a possibility. Thanks again for checking in, and I'll see you in the next one.